Welcome back to the channel. I'm Trevor with Maker Experiment, and today I'm going to be talking about the frequently asked questions that I get about laser machining. These questions are in no particular order, so let's just get to it. When engraving mugs, they don't look shiny or look good. What do I need to do? So I actually use cleaner after I engrave it. The one I use is called LA's Totally Awesome Cleaner. You can actually get it from Dollar Tree, uh, so it is a dollar. And then they have refill bottles there as well. Try that out, it should clean up all of your engravings. What are your thoughts on the Glowforge? So I like that they came out with a machine that's a lower cost for hobbyists. Granted, the pro level Glowforge is still like $7,000, so it's not a cheap machine by any means. Uh, as far as the pros go, I like that it has the camera system to scan drawings, which is a really kid-friendly option to have if you have kids and you're making items for kids. Uh, it's small, which is good for small shops that don't have a lot of room. And overall, it seems user-friendly. I haven't ever used one. One day I'd like to get one to compare with one of the higher tier machines just to get a sense of how different they really are. As far as what I don't like about it, I don't like that it has to be connected to the internet at all times because if something happens and the company went out of business and for some reason it wasn't supported, you might end up with a giant paperweight. Another thing that a lot of people ask me is, can you engrave mugs with the Glowforge? And as far as I know, you cannot. They don't offer a rotary attachment to actually engrave all the way around. You could potentially engrave a mug on flat surface, maybe. But I don't know that it has the Z height to do that either. It kind of depends on the mug that you choose. The other part that I don't like is that the housing, as far as I can tell, is primarily made out of plastic so that if something redirects the beam unintentionally, it could potentially go through the plastic. Granted, that's a fairly low risk for that happening, but it is a possibility. Again, one day I'd like to actually get one in and compare it side by side with like an epilogue or universal or something like that to give a better breakdown of what I like and what I don't like and how it stacks up against a competitor model. What laser would you recommend for a small business? If you're actually going to be running it as a business and you want to actually do some level of production, whether it's entry level or whatever that may be, I'd actually recommend the Epilogue Zing 24. And the reason that I say that is it is built for entry level production. It has a rotary attachment if you wanna do mugs or things like that. Uh, it does machine pretty quickly, a lot faster than some other competitor models. I do understand that it has a little bit higher price tag than something like a Glowforge, but if you're going to treat it as a business, in my opinion, I'd get a production level machine. And as long as you're running it like a business, your business should be able to pay for it. Keep in mind that that is not the machine I'd recommend for a hobbyist that's just getting into it or just wants to explore because that's a lot of money for something that you just wanna explore and try. I'd actually check out Craigslist or eBay, things like that for cheaper machines because sometimes you can get a really nice model machine for a cheaper price because it's been used and it's a little bit older and in fact, I got started by actually buying my first two lasers off of Craigslist at a pretty good deal. Which actually leads me into the next question, which is what machine would you recommend for a hobbyist? Like I said before, I wouldn't necessarily recommend buying a brand new Epilogue or Trotec or Universal because it can be kind of expensive if you're just wanting to do it once in a while. I would check out Craigslist, I would check out eBay and look for search items like Epilogue or Trotec or Universal or Laser Engraver and see what deals pop up near your area. I'd also search within about an eight hour drive because sometimes driving a little ways can actually get you a really good deal. As far as a brand new machine, there aren't a ton that I'd recommend that are less than say six or $7,000. And at that point, I would argue that that's not really a hobbyist level price point anymore. So again, I'd check out Craigslist or eBay and try to find a good machine that way. 
Uh, you can also check with manufacturers and see if they have pre-owned machines. Did you get your Epilog laser for free? So no, I did not. I paid for it fully. It's actually being financed right now, so I make monthly payments on it, just like anybody else would. I had no incentive to buy it, other than I just like the company, and I have had their machines in the past and used machines in the past, and I wanted to stick with them. How much does it cost to actually run your laser? So this one actually has a mathematical formula for it. Uh, I'm gonna try to put it up on the screen here somewhere. So what you need to figure out is the maximum power wattage that your laser can draw. So in my case, that is 1900 watts. You also need to figure out your electrical cost. So for the state that I'm in, which is Nevada, it is 11 cents per kilowatt hour. So you need to figure out what it is for you and what it costs per kilowatt hour. And then the formula is basically going to be your wattage or the 1900 for me, multiplied by the electricity cost or the 11 cents per kilowatt hour. Take that and divide it by a thousand. And then once you do that, multiply it by the number of hours you wanna get the rate for. So say that you want to figure out the cost to machine for one hour because that's how long your project takes. In this case, it'd be the wattage times your power cost divided by a thousand and multiplied by one. So for me, that works out to 1900 watts times 11 cents per kilowatt hour divided by a thousand. And then I take that and multiply it by one and I get to 21 cents per hour. So, which is nice from that standpoint, it doesn't cost a lot to run per hour. So, you know, for an eight hour period, it's not a ridiculous cost. The few things I would take into consideration with that is it's not just your machine that is running, it's also a compressor for air assist, it's a exhaust fan for exhausting all the fumes out and your computer that you're communicating to the machine with. So worst case scenario, grab the max wattage draw for each of those components, which I did for mine, and then you can figure out how much it costs to actually run a laser setup for a total of an hour or eight hour period. So for me, my laser is about 21 cents per hour. My exhaust fan is 19 cents per hour. The compressor is three cents per hour. The computer is one cent per hour. So I am looking at a total cost of 44 cents per hour to run my laser setup. Hopefully that answered that question well enough, but if you have questions, let me know. How long have you been using lasers? I have actually been using lasers since 2013. So right now it's about seven years. What software do you use for design? I actually use Adobe Illustrator. It's because that's what I learned when I was in college and what I had been practicing on. So it was just kind of a natural progression, as well as Adobe Illustrator is on the leading edge for industry. So a lot of customers that I have used it as well. But you can use things like Corel Draw or Affinity Design. Pretty much any vector program will work with a laser machine. The next question is, what kind of laser do you have? I actually have an Epilogue Fusion M240. It has a cutting width or bed engraving table area of 28 inches by 40 inches. Uh, so that's plenty for me right now. Uh, maybe in the future I'll upgrade to a bigger one, but that's a really good size to have. Will you teach me how to use a laser? So I actually created a class on Skillshare for getting started with lasers. I do plan to try and come out with more courses in the future as well as one-on-one -on -one coaching and help. But if you're interested in having me teach you about lasers or design, reach out to me and I'm sure we can figure something out. What laser settings do you use? So this is a very general question. Uh, it depends on the type of material that I'm working with, the thickness of material that I'm working with and what I'm trying to do. So I'm actually going to put a chart that I got from Epilogue down in the description. I'll put a link to it where you can see starter settings for different wattages. My machine actually came with preloaded settings in it for different types of materials. Granted, they're not spot on, but I can tweak them to whatever I want. 
Uh, I also use a material grid to test new materials to figure out settings that way. And I'll go ahead and link that in the description as well. There's also a YouTube video I did about that that I will put in one of the cards. Will you machine items for people that want to design their own thing but just don't have the machine? So basically doing things for people as if it were a maker space or basically paying for machine time. And the answer is yes, I do actually do that. I have a couple people that do it pretty regularly. So if that's something that you'd like to look into and you wanna design your own files and just have me cut them for you and send you the parts, we can do that. Where do you buy your acrylic? So I actually buy my acrylic from a lot of different places depending on what I'm looking for but the most common are actually going to be canal plastics, which is good for a lot of different colors for cast acrylic. I also use Johnson Plastics for dual layer acrylics, so multicolors. And I actually have a discount code for JP Plus in the description below where you can save 10% on your order. And I also get it locally, uh, here at a warehouse that I have to buy it in specific quantities to get the pricing and I have to buy full four by eight foot sheets. So that's not necessarily always the cheapest way to go when it comes to forking out the money. But usually when I go to break it down per sheet and what it costs per sheet, it works out to be cheaper than if I were to buy one sheet at a time from a different supplier. That was the list of questions I had for this video. If you have more questions for me about lasers or design or anything you'd like to know, leave a comment in the description below and I'll try to make another video like this if I get enough of them. And if you like the video, feel free to subscribe to the channel and turn on notifications so that you know when I come out with new videos. And be sure to check out my Instagram at Maker Experiment where I share this kind of information or do question polls and things like that all the time. But I want to thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next video.